Well, we said from the beginning that passwords are problems and everybody's got them, right? Well, uh, let's take a look at a few tips for better passwords, including, let's start with one of my favorite tips from XKCD. Thanks to the gang over at XKCD for this great uh, password complexity cartoon. You can see uh, even a pretty complex password like this, an uncommon base word like Troubadour, and then a few common substitutions like some capitalization, a zero for the O, a four for the A, and then uh, even some punctuation and a number, ampersand three in this case. That would take about three days to brute force if you were doing just a thousand guesses for, per second. Of course, we can run lots more guesses per second than that on a standard computer. So that rates this as an easy to guess but you can see it is really hard to remember that as a person. However, if we took just four random common words, correct, horse, battery, staple, those don't have any uppercase, lowercase, no punctuation, no hard to remember substitutions, it's just correct, horse, battery, staple, that would take around 550 years for a computer to guess. So you've already memorized this password and it's significantly harder for a computer to guess that one. Of course, don't use that password because I'm sure that's in a password database now too. Well, let's talk about some tips that will help you keep your password safer. Think simple for you to remember, but hard for a computer to guess. And a passphrase is a much better way to go than just taking a dictionary word, even an uncommon one, and doing some of those substitutions. We saw we can crack through those really fast. But here's some tips for keeping your passwords safe. First of all, don't give out your password. Uh, when it comes to social engineering, we saw phishing, we saw pretexting. You call up and say, this is Microsoft support. We see a problem with your computer. Let me help you. Or it looks like your account's been hacked into. Don't give out your password ever. Log in directly to your computer. Change your password if you feel like somebody might have had access to it. Uh, don't be afraid to burn those passwords, change those passwords on a pretty uh, regular rotation. But about once every six months is okay if you're using good passwords like we'll talk about here. That includes don't write those passwords down, right? When you give out a password or when you write it down and tack it to your monitor, that's an easy way for social engineering to work. Well, we talked about snacking. Remember, if we just leave that posted on the monitor, because it's such a hard password, we can't remember it anymore then we run into the risk of somebody just walking by our desk and having all of our passwords. But you can choose a simple to remember password, like the first letters of a phrase. I graduated from high school in and some number at the age of, and you use I, G, F, H, S, the first letter of each of those phrases. You can actually use a passphrase in a lot of websites that allow you to do a really long password or passphrase. That's a good idea. You can use the first letters of all the words in a song that you like for a particular site. So let's say that I wanted to use Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow. M-H-A-L-L-I-F-W-W-A. And then I did one substitution there, dollar sign, and then seven and maybe the number doubled. So seven and then 14. That is a very difficult to guess password, but Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow. It's pretty easy to remember. And then maybe the number seven you'd have to remember as well. So if you wanted to do a password hint for this, or even if you wrote this down on a post-it and kept it in your wallet or your purse, someplace where you don't leave your wallet out, someplace you don't leave your purse out, just put it someplace that you don't give other people access to very much. Or even storing that one on your computer might not be the worst thing. If it's just the hint sheep seven, oh, Mary had a little amp. You just have to remember not to hum your password when you're typing it in at your keyboard. Somebody will figure out what your uh, password <laughs> was. Uh, when it comes to hacking, we've seen that passwords get hacked from websites, right? We got all of those passwords from a Windows 7 box just by dumping the hash values of the password files. At some point, just about every website that you are a member of or you have an account on is going to be hacked. So don't use just one password. If you use one password for one type of thing or one site, use a different password for a different type of site or a different, different web page. 
but uh, always have a really tough password for your email, have a different password for banking, have different passwords for different uh, websites. It's a smart thing because if one site gets hacked, then the first thing people are going to try is using that username and password on other sites. We saw sniffing could uh, expose your password out over the network if you log into a site that's not secure. Always use HTTPS to enter your passwords. Make sure you're on a secure connection before you log into Facebook to your website. If you have a WordPress site, you want to make sure that you get a secure certificate so that you can enter your password only using HTTPS. Otherwise, anyone on the same network as you can see it in plain text. When it comes to cracking, this is for web administrators especially, but web admins should always salt password hashes. Uh, that's a technical term, but it just means adding a couple of random characters to the front of a password hash and hashing it with those extra uh, characters added in there. That way, when and if a password database is dumped from a web server, at least the attacker won't be able to look those hashes up immediately online because we'll have added some extra characters before those and changed them up a little bit. A good tip for passwords overall is to use multi-factor authentication, two-factor authentication, where maybe uh, before you log into your Gmail from a new computer, it will send you a text and ask you if you want to allow that. That's a great thing to do. Do that for your social media accounts, for your email account, for your bank accounts. Anything that you don't log into from a whole lot of different computers or anything that you want to keep really safe, two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication is a really smart thing. That's why in business we'll have a key card that gets us in, but we'll also have to know a PIN for certain areas or know a password for other things. Um, you can consider a password manager if you have a whole lot of passwords to remember. A password manager can store passwords in encrypted form and it can even randomize passwords so it gives really long random hard passwords for your banking website or for your email account. A password manager can help you manage all of those passwords that we have in modern life. I'll leave you with one last most important tip that I give my students. Make your email password your hardest password to crack. That means if you only have one password as good as this one, Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow, you might want to pick a different song, of course. It should be on your email account. Now, why is that? Well, because your email account is usually the one location that all your other passwords get reset to. So if you forget your banking password, you enter your email address and say, I forgot my password. And then your bank sends you a link to your email account that you can click through and change your password. So if somebody gets into your email account, they can just do a search for receipt or do a search for statement and they will find all of your purchases, uh, that's all the websites that you buy things from, all of your passwords to all of your banking accounts, or they'll find all of your accounts, credit card accounts, things like that. Once they have your email password, they can go to each of those sites and say, I forgot my password, and it can reset back. So protect your email account above just about everything else. It's even more important than your bank account passwords because your bank account passwords usually get reset to your email account. So I hope all of these are useful tips. I hope you've seen that it's really important to protect your passwords and to use good password security, especially if you're a web administrator or if you are in charge of a network or a website. You want to make sure that you enable secure sockets or secure connections to your website. Hope you've enjoyed this section. Now go out there and change all your passwords and make them better.